Chinese President Xi Jinping is set to arrive in Myanmar on Friday for his first visit as President of the People's Republic. The trip will also be the first by a sitting Chinese president in nearly two decades. The two sides are expected to sign a number of commitments encompassing trade, politics and culture. And this year also marks the 70th anniversary of bilateral ties with China and Myanmar, which were first established in 1950. So how can Xi Jinping's trip strengthen the China-Myanmar Puk Pao, or fraternal friendship? What are the opportunities for the two countries to promote cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative? Joining me to discuss this are Professor Zhang Xiaoyu, an expert in Asian studies at communication universities in China. Again, Professor Liu Baocheng joining us again. And also Li Boluan, co-founder of Dai Insider and constant creator and solution provider for entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for joining us. So let me start with Lady First, Professor Zhang. This is a first trip by Chinese president in almost two decades to Myanmar. Yeah. Why is it only happening now? Uh, this year is the 70th anniversary of uh, Myanmar and China uh, diplomatic relationship. It is a milestone for Chinese Myanmar people to uh, to see this most important year in two countries' relationship. And uh, this year, President Xi Jinping is the first foreign trip for him to develop the bilateral ties. And also, we will see these two countries' development in this trip and see many MOUs to uh, to be signed. Yeah. And, and, and Professor Liu, how does Beijing view the strategic importance of Myanmar? Well, Myanmar uh, is probably one of the very few peaceful neighbors with China. And uh, not only because they, uh, they believe in Buddhism, but also, uh, you know, we really manage the relationship pretty well. And the, uh, uh, China is also, you know, uh, stepping up in the regional integration. Uh, particularly over the uh, RCEP, the Regional Economic Comprehensive Partnership, in which uh, both parties are uh, important members to it. And uh, also, uh, Myanmar is uh, uh, strategically important uh, in that, you know, in the uh, China is building the China Ma uh, Myanmar Corridor uh, uh, for economic purposes. And also, there are uh, also outstanding issues in. Uh, building infrastructure like a Misung, uh, you know, hydraulic uh, uh, hydraulic power station, etc. So there are opportunities and there are challenges, and but uh, we do uh, really wanted to create a very positive uh, relationship mm -hmm. and also a positive image uh, towards a better integration of this region. Yeah, and Bolin, your company has offices not only in China but also the Philippines, Myanmar. Right. I guess you're closely watching this trip, of course. And so do a lot of people in the business community. So what kind of expectation do you have for the president's pre uh, visit this time? Sure. So apart from what the other two guys have mentioned, I am going to provide a more Myanmar perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Myanmar is a country with 55 million population. And it's one of the few countries in the world uh, with the most dynamic economies, mm -hmm. a lot of innovations, a lot of new opportunities coming out. And the government has been uh, implementing the Sustainable Development Plan of Myanmar 2018 to 20, 2030, uh, which has a lot of new opportunities for China to watch. Uh, I think this is really important um, uh, momentum that um, for both the leaders of the country and also for other uh, partners, uh, other stakeholders in the country uh, should t pay more attention to uh, what Myanmar is looking at uh, for the new uh, five or ten years. 70 years of diplomatic ties. How would you describe how the relation has evolved over time? Uh, actually, we have a very long historical connection with Myanmar during the past 70 years. Actually, we have seen sort of a, a fraternal connection with Myanmar, and the Chinese people really now want to pay a visit and also the main magnet for Chinese tourists to visit there. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, it is a very good, there will be a very good future for all of us to look forward. Actually, mm -hmm. Uh, Myanmar will be the next most important uh, Southeast Asian country for Chinese people to look at and pay attention to. And yeah. even beyond that, actually, yeah. you know, uh, we still remember that China, uh, Chinese army uh, have been working so closely with uh, Myanmar army to fight against the Japanese invasion and occupation in this region. Mm -hmm. And that can really, you know, uh, leave a legacy for these uh, two countries and these two peoples to be uh, very friendly and working together. So there is a connection there. And also let's get down to the deals because it's understood that China and Myanmar will sign several memorandums of understanding during President Xi's two-day visit. Uh, Bolin, how are you uh, expecting the deals? I mean, it's been reported that there will be multiple deals across different spheres, cultural, po politics, economics. 
Um, what kind of uh, details are you learning from your sources there sure. in Myanmar? Well, it's difficult to definitely predict what's going to happen. Uh, but I'm thinking from two uh, different levels. Uh, the, first is, the first level is more about infrastructure development, mm -hmm. uh, because everyone knows that there are a lot of infrastructure projects, from the Zilfio port uh, to um, like the, uh, the, the, the China uh, and many other projects um, uh, along the China-Myanmar economic corridor. Uh, there are many strategic locations uh, that need more infrastructure. So I think there are more discussions and MOUs about, about these kind of uh, topics. The second topic, I think, more uh, friendly to, to Myanmar uh, uh, to some extent is more about like sustainable development and poverty reduction because Myanmar uh, is a country that's mm -hmm. trying to lift more people out of poverty and China's donations or China's assistance in uh, different sectors in the country uh, from uh, public health or uh, to, to education are strategically important for, for Myanmar and also for Dao Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, new, new, new period of, um, of, 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 of um, uh, election. Yeah. Mm. I think now uh, uh, the Myanmar is also a very important member on the Belt and Road Program. Mm. And uh, we do not have you know, very uh, elaborate rules over the Belt and Road, but we do have a template. Uh, you know, the, the leading one is really the uh, common future uh, or uh, common destiny. But under which, the, as uh, uh, my colleague mentioned, that uh, you know, infrastructure development is all about connectivity. You know, capital movement, goods movement, services, and uh, I think more importantly, uh, which is very special of the Asian culture, is the connection of mind of those uh, peoples together. Very well said. And we have to talk about the China-Myanmar Economic Corridor. What do we know about it? How will it benefit both Myanmar and Chinese economy? Uh, currently, we Chinese people have a, a sort of uh, investment in Myanmar, uh, especially in Kyopil. Uh, Port. We are going to build up more business over there, but uh, considering the situation in Rakhine State, which is unstable during the past several years, uh, it is still very uh, sort of um, uh, unsettled uh, issue over there. We are going to uh, deal with this uh, Rohingya crisis uh, mm -hmm. at the same time during President Xi Jinping's trip this, uh, this time as well. Uh, actually, there will be more uh, expectations, but there will be more severe challenges. Yeah. So given the security uh, situation there, is this some sort of concern uh, from an investment point of view? For me? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, if, you are, if, you are, if you are a tourist, if you are a businessman, uh, if you live in most of the, the, the areas of, of Myanmar, uh, mm -hmm. you feel definitely safe. Uh, okay. But if we're talking about a specific investment in a, in, in, in a specific location like your Kai State, um, sometimes it depends on what kind of investment it is, right? Uh, so if your investment, um, if the investment involves a, 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 a large amount of uh, money and very complex uh, ethnic uh, issues or, or, um, or social issues, uh, there might be more considerations for social or environmental or governance issues. Mm -hmm. And this has been uh, neglected sometimes before, mm -hmm. uh, but I think more and more Chinese companies, uh, based on my understanding, have paid more attention. And they have done uh, more to, 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 to address such issues. So mm -hmm. I, I think the, in terms of the risks, um, it's, it's going to be addressed with more careful actions. Here are some trade numbers I want to read to our viewers. So China is Myanmar's largest trading partner, and trading between the two neighbor countries has reached 18.7 billion U.S. dollars in 2019. That's an annual increase of 28.5 percent. And China's imports from Myanmar jumped 42.8 percent to reach 6.3 billion dollars. Professor Liu, what does the increase mean uh, for both China and Myanmar? It's a uh, you know the enhanced uh, friendship and also the uh, China's uh, the very serious implica uh, uh, implementation of the Belt and Road Program and to uh, build the uh, China Myanmar economic corridor is uh, one key part and uh, also uh, you know China is now also focusing on uh, balancing trade with uh, the major trading partners particularly over its neighbor by reducing. Uh, tariffs by uh, offering more of the foreign exchange, uh, you know, the accessible by Chinese companies. So, uh, you know, that really helps a great deal. And the, the fact that uh, uh, China is now the largest trading partner, and also uh, China is also the largest source for uh, tourism uh, in, uh, in Myanmar, and that also contributed to their uh, income of foreign exchange. Mm. So. Uh, so the situation has been improving. Yes, there are sporadic issues, regional issues, 
But uh, uh, given the trust and given the respect of each other's differences, I think the, uh, we do have a lot more opportunities to uh, explore uh, between mm -hmm. these two countries. Yeah, and for the past year as well, and you have worked with various mm -hmm. organizations, including NGOs in Myanmar for sustainable mm -hmm. uh, development and poverty reduction. What kind of experience is that like? <laughs> well, it's a very rewarding experience because that, that you spend a lot of time working in the field as kind of international professionals. But more important, I think for me, myself, it's the uh, experience of learning about the culture, about the political system, about the development agenda, because different countries have different agendas. Um, and for Myanmar, uh, I think also thinking from the, the perspective of Chinese investment or, 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 or cooperation, it's very crucial to understand different cultures, different systems, uh, and, and to, 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 mingle, to mingle well uh, with the local society. So I think this is more of a, a trend in the next five to 10 years for, 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 the, for the business in, uh, from China to Myanmar. All right, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you very much for joining us. Bo Luen and Professor Liu and Professor John, thank you so much.